property market that he had bet on so heavily was suddenly in trouble. The spring of 06, prices were on fire. And then, come the summer, the market died. I mean, I work for one of the larger agents who in the first half of 06 sold 3,000 new homes. You look at a year later, in the first half of 07, they sold less than 100. I mean, the market literally turned off like a tap. The international markets that lent to Anglo were alarmed. The dogs in the street were barking about Anglo. They were not only selling Anglo shares, investors from overseas, particularly from overseas, they were selling them short. International observers looking in at the Irish banking system realised that there was a very dangerous exposure to a single asset class called property. An enormous amount of the loans which had been lent by our banks were in danger of not being repaid, particularly those that were linked to property. This jitteriness in international markets followed the collapse of the US subprime mortgage business. Banks were now wary about lending to each other, and with Irish property also in decline, Irish banks no longer looked like a safe bed. Welcome to a special St. Patrick's Day 6-1 news and sport. The Irish market was down with bank shares worst hit. On St. Patrick's Day 2008, Anglo was the first to experience the changed sentiment. The market realised the entire Irish banking system was actually funded um, in large part by wholesale funds that had come from outside of domestic Ireland. And international investors started to get increasingly nervous about um, property prices and there was a wide-scale abandonment of the Irish banking sector. And the top of the list was Anglo. There were investors out there bane for blood, they recognised that there were some banks in a really weak position and Anglo was one of those and they moved against it that day. As Anglo's shares plunged, Fitzpatrick's model of borrowing internationally to lend to developers locally was crumbling. That was really the first identifiable moment in time when you could say there could be something seriously wrong in this bank. People realise this isn't a conservative, sensibly run business. It's actually become a distinctly high octane business using some of Wall Street's most aggressive techniques to try and drive profit growth. Anglo was a busted flush. Its collapse could wreak havoc. There was a major problem with Anglo Irish Bank, but clearly nothing was done. Instead, a crisis was allowed to develop which would endangered the entire financial edifice. The bank itself tried to hide the true state of its affairs, a deception that would soon come back to haunt the nation. It's Wednesday, September 24th six days before the bank guarantee. The crisis sparked by the bankruptcy of Lehman's is spreading rapidly to Europe. Suddenly, the European banking system went into a very rapid meltdown and governments were scrambling, trying to secure the situation, trying to prop up their own banking systems. I was very concerned at the time that there would not be a bank run, that there would not be those photos, pictures of films around the world showing people queuing outside banks, because I think that if we had had that, that would have been a complete disaster. Ireland is in trouble too, and the government is becoming increasingly alarmed. The credit markets that the Irish banks have become hugely over-dependent on simply freeze up. And that's what gives you the crisis in the Irish banks. Our banks were very dependent on obtaining funding from other countries. And once that began to dry up, we knew that that would create very serious problems for the Irish banking system. The government has some contingency plans, but is unprepared for the speed of the unfolding crisis. And now another unexpected turn. On Saturday, September 27th, the head of the European Central Bank tries to reach Brian Lennon. 
Mr. Trije rang me and hadn't been able to get through to me. I was at a race course in County Kilkenny at a Fianna Fáil event on the Saturday. So I caught up on Mr. Trije's message the following day, which was that you must save your banks at all, at, at all costs. It's Sunday evening, September 28th, 36 hours before the government acts, and the crisis is intensifying. Brian Lennon goes to the central bank to hear how serious things are. At that meeting, we had the senior officials from the central bank, the financial regulator, and they were in contact with their European counterparts. Reports were coming in of different member states having difficulties with their banks. Anyone that was in trouble, large or small, was potentially a threat to the entire system. The crisis, in terms of its speed, had stepped up in an enormous way. Monday morning, September 29th, 7.50 a.m., and decision time approaches. A global crisis spawned in Wall Street is closing in. As the markets open, Irish bank shares are in free fall. The headlines. The Irish stock market reached a record low as bank shares plummeted. At that stage, having consulted with all of my advisors, I felt it was important we meet the Taoiseach that evening. Later that night, decisions will be made hastily at government buildings, shaping the prospects of future generations for better or worse.